Hello everyone. Today I wanted to talk about another recent uh, addition to the Criterion Collection September 2021 and this is Throwdown and this is directed by Johnny Toe. It's from 2004. It's a Hong Kong judo movie and I, <clears throat> my knowledge of, uh, of Hong Kong action films is minimal. I've seen John Woo's, or two I think of his real early films, I don't remember much about them, um, and, which are very st stylistically heavy. Uh, and, and I have seen all of uh, Wong Kar Wai's movies, which are too uh, very uh, stylized. Uh, but of course those are more art, art house movies throw down in uh, the Hong Kong action film, very, very much commercial films. And like I say, this is a film about judo. We see a lot of people getting thrown down. And when we, when we look at the supplements, we learn that judo isn't even a popular sport in Hong Kong. But in this film, everybody knows judo. The only, only the, uh, the female protagonist in the film, she, she's the only one I think of all the speaking parts in the film that doesn't practice judo. And there's a uh, very charismatic lead performance by uh, Louis Koo, I believe is how his name is pronounced. And, and I, 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 uh, I believe he is a big star in Hong Kong cinema. And uh, he plays a ex-judo practitioner, judo uh, champion. Uh, but for two years, he has, uh, two years prior to the start of the film, he's given up uh, his practicing of judo. Um, and he's running a bar. He appears to be an alcoholic. Uh, he appears to also be deeply in debt to the local loan, uh, loan shark. And the second character is basically a three-character um, movie. Uh, is uh, played by Aaron Kwok, and he is a would-be champion in in the, uh, in uh, the art of judo. And he wants to fight everybody. He, he, he comes to this restaurant and he wants to fight uh, Louis Ku, but uh, there, he's totally uninterested. Judo is, is the last thing on his mind, so it would appear. And then we have a, a would-be singer played by Cherry Ying. And she, is, uh, uh, she, she doesn't have much talent, but she's, she's persevering in her dream to become a big, uh, a big time singer. And she arrives at this restaurant looking for a job. And the, the film kind of starts out as a screwball comedy. And judging from the extras in a book I'm reading about Hong Kong action film, films, uh, Johnny Toe would alternate between uh, comedies and police movies, police movies with lots of violent uh, action in them. There's not a gun to be seen in Throwdown. And um, um, again, this is, and, and there's no reality to this story. This is, uh, it, it, I was kind of dumbfounded by it, but dumbfounded in a good way. I didn't know what to expect and when I, I saw what I was getting. <laughs> Uh, it was something I wouldn't have anticipated. Um, there's there's very little substance in the movie, but it does start out as a comedy. And um, again, according to the supplements, it originally was meant to be a comedy. But Toe alternated um, different genres. Um, and every once in a while, he wanted to make a real personal film. And this is, according to him, one of his favorite film. And he thinks it's his best film. Um, and so he, he gave it a more serious tone to it and and the movie is sort of a a uh, a uh, conglomeration of, of different tones and like i say it's not it's not uh, in any sense of the ma uh, the word realistic uh, everybody fights with each other um the very the lighting is very expressionistic i really love the lighting in this movie um, and we get neon lights the the uh, nighttime uh, streets of Hong Kong, but every shot really is beautifully, beautifully lit, beautifully composed. And in the um, and, and the the arc of the story is basically getting this Louis Koo uh, uh, character back on his feet again. He's got to he's got to give up this despair and and fight against these demons that that are possessing. We really don't know what the main demon is. We learn what it is as the film goes by. Gradually learn what it is that's that's really um, 
uh, filling him with this despair. And um, so it's a film about friendship. These three characters who meet, you know, in the beginning of the film don't really know each other. They all get involved in these, uh, in these uh, uh, kind of activities that are, <laughs> are oftentimes very humorous. Uh, they steal money from the loan shark. The loan shark turns out to be a great admirer of the, the Louis Koo uh, character. Um, you really don't know what, what's going to happen in this movie. Uh, there's a, um, an interview in the supplements with Johnny Toe from 2004, and he goes over the themes of the film, like I say, friendship, loyalty, follow your dreams, pick yourself up again when things go wrong, got to be optimistic, got to have hope. Um, and uh, he, he also expresses a kind of nostalgia for when he was a, a young man and he thinks that in the 1970s and he believes that there was so much more optimism there. I guess Hong Kong had just recently uh, uh, survived the uh, scare of SARS, uh, another er earlier virus that didn't affect us much in the US but it did in, in, in Asia. And, and there, he, wants to, he wants to instill uh, Johnny Toe wants to instill a new sense of, of hope. This is, this is how he sees this movie. Um, and uh, some of the commentators in the supplement say you really have to watch it a few more times to get, to get the whole gist of the film and to understand all these different uh, various scenes that uh, Toe puts in the film. Uh, he was a, evidently a, a big time improviser. They would do different things along the way than, uh, different than what was planned in the, um, in the script. There's no stuntmen. I don't know how these actors survive the stunts that they go through here because they're just, they're, uh, you know, how uh, they didn't wind up with broken arms and dislocated shoulders and they do all their own stunts. Um, and uh, then we have an interview with the screenwriter, Ya, ya Noi Hoi, I believe his name is. Uh, and he, he, he's very good at, he didn't understand uh, what Toe was doing. And he would say, well, it, does this, this doesn't really make any sense. And Toe didn't really care about it, didn't really need to make sense. He, would, he, he, he left blank spaces. He liked to leave blank spaces. Let the audience fill in, fill in the blanks. And, and uh, the screenwriter also comments how different this is from like working in Hollywood where you have a, a really um, well-structured, presumably a well-structured screenplay in which one scene leads to the next, leads to the next till we get to the climax. We don't really have that. We have like a collaboration of scenes here. Then there's an a, a interview with the composer, Peter Kahn, and this is a terrific score. And composers are always good at analyzing movies because they have to watch the movie, every scene, they have to watch them over and over and over again. And he was saying that you have to get, a, a, that, that, that Johnny Toe puts a real rhythmic uh, cadence to the, to the movement in his films. And it's funny, in the interview with Toe, he says that he wanted to be, this was his film where he was going to be so static. The Tometer's running around all, <laughs> all over the place. There's movement constant. So I guess if this is a static movement, uh, movement, static movie, I, I guess his, his other ones, uh, his action, crime action films, must be really at the uh, high energy level. Then we get uh, Carolyn Gore, uh, who is a film critic, and she gives a very good um, uh, context to to the movie um, in the sense of its relationship to Hong Kong cinema. Uh, and Johnny Cho stayed in Hong Kong. He never, unlike um, John Wu and Wong Kar Wai and Sue Hark, he never came to the United States to make movies. He had his own production company. And the reason he would constantly make um, uh, 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 very commercial films uh, and alternate them with more personal films like Throwdown because his company had to make money. Um, and so he was kind of, it's it, it sort of implied that he was uh, underrepresented uh, in uh, film festivals around the world, not no longer, uh, but um, uh, certainly he's, he doesn't appear to be a film festival type director. <laughs> um, and we also get a, um, a fold out, and this is a kind of overfill fold out, but it does have a rather 
on one side it does have, uh, and that's uh, Sherry Ying, and this is from a great scene in the film where she is being chased. She, they, she's stolen money, and the uh, people that she's stolen money from are chasing her down a nighttime empty street, and, and she can't hold on to the money, and the money goes flying, and they have to, the, the people chasing her have to decide whether they should be picking up the money or keep going after her. And uh, that's, and there, there's a, there are a couple of other really trademark scenes in the film and, uh, and, and justly famous. One is the, what's called the four table scene where all, they're in the uh, restaurant and all three of them meet people that are after them. Um, and uh, Cherry, uh, Cherry Ying has, uh, has an agent who tried to get her into pornographic movies. And of course, Louis who is, owes money big time, and he also meets with his um, he also meets with his uh, mentor. Um, and what what happens here is just a masterpiece of uh, of, uh, of, of mise en scene. Uh, the, the, and when you hear how it was described, the interlocking dialogue and and movement among the characters when when somebody says something and everybody moves in one direction, it, it's just beautifully done. And then there's the other film, uh, other scene that sort of encapsulate the theme of the film, where a red balloon is stuck up in a tree, and uh, and all three of them sort of have to join forces in a very comical and, and rather moving way uh, to try to rescue this red balloon. Um, and then on the other side, we get a on the other side of the poster art, we get a uh, a very good essay. Um, but you know, I have such a hard time. <laughs> you know, it keeps it, 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 it's consistent with the color scheme. But my gosh, being able to read that uh, that color against the dark black background, boy, that's a toughie. I don't think I'll ever be able to do that again. But it's a shame because it's a really, really good uh, essay. So I, what this film has done is what up my appetite to see some more Johnny Toe movies, to see some more Hong Kong cinema. Uh, so the criteria, if nothing else, the Criterion uh, Collection uh, uh, has really done me a favor in that in that aspect, and it's a, it's a very entertaining movie. Like I say, it's style over substance, but that style is quite impressive. Okay, thanks everybody who managed to listen to me this far. I really do appreciate it. Uh, comments are welcome. You guys take care.